Hey everybody, St. Godric here with a fireside chat around a recent deep dive that I did uh, around the history of knighting and amp guard and some interesting stats that I found. Let's jump into it. So for today, uh, going to be something a little different, a little bit relaxed, a little bit chill. Um, just I had a question the other day of how many five belted knights are out there. Uh, and the spreadsheet I'm going to show you today uh, spawn from that. So I get these hyperfixations sometimes, uh, and this is one of them. And I've shared it around with a few people, and uh, a bunch of people told me that I should make a video on it. So uh, here it is, without further ado, the history of knighting in Amgard. So what I did for each kingdom here, we'll go through and we'll look at these. Let's see, maybe I should zoom in a little more. Yeah, we'll do that, just to be sure. So I've got the kingdom. I've got the year it was founded, and then I have the total number of crown knights, what percentage of their total knights are crown knights, right? So in comparison to all five uh, roads, right, paths, 29% uh, of 13 roads knights are crown knights. And then based on how many knightings they have per year, so this is 0.5 crown knights are made in this kingdom per year. Then I did the same thing with flame, serpent, sword, and battle. And then I, over here, did the total number of belts for that kingdom. Uh, this is important to know. This is not total number of knights, because many of the knights, as we'll see here in a minute, have multiple belts. Uh, this is specifically for how many belts have been handed out. And then I did how many have been handed out per year. At the end, I took the average of all of these, and if it is if this column is purple, it means that this kingdom gives out fewer belts than the per year than the average kingdom. And if it's yellow, that means they give out more belts per than the average kingdom. I then and we'll come back through and look at all of this here in a minute. I then went through and did every uh, one from two belter, three belter, four belter, and five belter from that kingdom. Uh, just because I was interested in that. And then I added all of these up. And then I have, so we'll go through the data and then I'll pull, show you some of the things that I have uh, gotten out of this and just some ideas here. Caveat before I get too far forward. This is according to ORC data, the first week of November in 2024. I think that that's important. Get that out of the way. Um, I also, something I learned Tons of kingdoms don't do a good job of keeping their orc up to date. Uh, there are people who I know have multiple belts who aren't listed as having multiple belts. What I did for this to keep it statistically the same all the way through is I only went by what the orc says. Okay, I did not fix anything minus I added one five belter in in Polaris because he should be there and we'll get there when we get there. Uh, but everybody else, I did purely what the orc data had. So if you're looking at this and your kingdom is a little bit off, uh, just know this is from the data available on the orc. Uh, if it's wrong, get your PM to fix it. I think these are close enough to give uh, some decent stats and some decent observations, uh, even if they're not exactly correct. So we'll go over here. Um, I am going to go here. Um, just pick a couple of these out. I'm not going to go through and do a bunch. Uh, I'm not going to go through and do all of them, uh, but I want to do a few here. Um, so Celestial Kingdom is one that was interesting to me. Uh, one of the preconceived uh, notions that I had going into this was that newer kingdoms give out more belts than the older kingdoms per year. And then I also had the assumption that older kingdoms would have um, like they might have more knights as a whole because they've been around longer, but that they wouldn't have given out as many. Uh, Celestial Kingdom here, we'll go through this. Year founded in 1990. Um, they have given out 39 total crown belts or 1.1 crown belt per year. 21% of their total um, is, high, is crown belts. Flame Knight, 71 total with 2.1 per year. 39%. Serpent, 34 total, one per year with 19% of total belts. Sword belts, half of a sword belt is given out a year and 
0.6 of a battle belt is given out per year. So if we come over here, though, their average is 5.4 belts per year given out. If we compare that up here to 13 roads, which again, my idea going into it was that new kingdoms give out more. 13 roads is very new and they're well below the average of belts per year. Um, if I scroll down here, I did the average of all of the kingdoms across all of these categories. And so right here, you can see the average kingdom gives out 3.6 belts per year for the entirety of their existence. Okay, so then um, we can go ahead and scroll over here, I guess. So what I did, the kingdoms that give the most amount of belts per year are Nine Blades, gives out nine belts per year. Winner's Edge gives out 7.3 belts per year. And Polaris gives out 6.1 belts per year. Now, all of these kingdoms are relatively new. So then you might think, well... That means new kingdoms give out more. But that's not necessarily the case because um, if we scroll over here and look at like 13 roads is still a new kingdom, uh, 2020. Um, let's look, where is another one? Winter's Edge was here. There was another Viridian Outlands right here at 2020 as well. So both newer kingdoms. If we scroll over here, they're at 3.3. If we look at 13 roads up here at the top, they're at 1.8. So we might be able to say that newer kingdoms tend to give out more, but I think saying a blanket statement of, of newer kingdoms give out more awards, I don't think is quite fair or accurate. If we go to the other side, the bottom belts per year, uh, Dragon Spine at less than one a year, Burning Lands at one a year, and Golden Vale at 1.2. This makes me think, okay, well, older kingdoms get, have historically given out fewer belts per year. But the problem with that is we have older kingdoms who give out plenty of belts, right? Um, we, we already talked about the CK, right? The CK gives out 5.4 belts per year, which is only, you know, set almost two times as much as the average. So old kingdoms tend to give out fewer belts, but not always, right? If we look, Iron Mountains does give out very little, it seems. I, I was surprised at how few knights Iron Mountains had. I will I will say that. Um, but like Golden Vale's old, 95. Let's look. They're, okay, they're low. What are some of the other ones over here that are considered old? Um, Emerald Hills, let's look at them. 2.4, right? So just a little bit below the average. So I think it is fair to say that newer kingdoms tend to have to give more belts than older kingdoms, but I don't think that that is 100% always the case. So I think that's important when we uh, talk about this is that there are some generalities, but not enough for me to say always. Something that was interesting to me and if you've been following me for a long time, one of my first pieces of content I ever put out was an article that I wrote um, for Peasant's Perspective. It was a, a LARP blog thing. Um, and one of it was talking about the easiest belt. And it was talking about why are crown and flame so much easier to get than sir, sword and serpent. At the time, there were only four belts. And and I did some statistical analysis on which kingdoms give out the most belts. And then are we okay with flame and crown being given out at that time, 10 years ago, two to one, three to one, depending on what kingdom you were in, more than the competitive belts, right? The service belts were different than the competitive belts. So now extending that, I have the totals, the average of all kingdoms. Uh, so what I'll do here, I think this is important. You can take a look. I'll place this spreadsheet in the comment section below. You can look at your kingdom and see where your kingdom lines up. Does your kingdom give above or below the average on all of these? And is that a problem? Uh, I can only address the kingdoms that I've played in, um, but as a whole, uh, we can kind of use this as common language uh, to be able to have these conversations. So the average Amp Guard kingdom was founded 
in 2005. Interesting. Um, there have been a total of 294 crown belts. Out of all of the belts given, 23% of them are crown belts, which means there is roughly on, on every given kingdom is giving 0.8 crown belts per year. Okay. If we go over here to flame, 445 flame belts have been given out. 35% of total belts given out are flame belts with an average of 1.2 flame belts given out per kingdom per year. Serpent, 316 total serpent belts, equating to 25% of total belts, with each kingdom giving roughly 0.9 or 1 belt per year. This isn't per reign, remember, per year. Sword belts, 125 sword belts, equaling 10% of the total, given... 0.4 sword belts are given out per kingdom per year. And then this one was a little new, but when I thought about or a little interesting, but when I thought about it, it makes sense. Battle belt, which is the newest one, is the rarest belt to find right now. Uh, it's 107 of them have been given out, 8% uh, of total belts, 0.4 per year per kingdom. And that makes sense to me because it's so new. Uh, some kingdoms gave out 30 as soon as they came out, other kingdoms gave out one. And so I think as time goes on, I think Battle Belt will be given more. I think it, Sword will still be the rarest once we get 10 years into this and have more statistical data. Um, but as of now, narrowly, Battle Belt is the rarest belt given out um, by any or in out of all of our game. We have a total of 1,287 belts have been given out in the history of Amgard according to the orc as it sits right now. This is what's crazy, okay? The average kingdom gives out 3.6 belts per year. Both of the kingdoms that I have played in extensively are way, way higher than that, right? I am currently playing in Winter's Edge. We give out seven a year. I played for years and years and years in the Rising Winds. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, Rising Winds, here we go, gives out 4.3 per year, okay? I know that this is, uh, it's the older kingdoms that are going to be lower because it's more of an average. I get that. I know RW, Rising Winds, over the last post-COVID, we'll call it, have been knighting like 15 to 20 people a year. Um, so that's very high. Um, and then same thing down here with Winter's Edge, very high as well. Both very significantly higher than the average of 3.6 belts per year per kingdom. So coming over here, this first column, there are a total of 166 people with two belts in the orc right now. There are 66 people with three belts, 16 people with four belts, and 10 people with uh, five belts. Technically, this is nine. Technically, Sir Michael, Hammer of God, does not have all five. I put him in here because he should, and he will always, even if he doesn't accept that last one, in my mind, and I think in the mind of just about everybody else, he's a five belter, whether he wants to acknowledge it or not. That's the only one I've fudged in all of the orc data, and I'm okay fudging that for Michael. It's fine. So here are the numbers in the total number of belts. Uh, some things that I noticed while doing this, uh, the most common overlap of two belts was e by far flame and crown. Uh, the vast majority of two belters were flame crown. Uh, those skill sets seem to line up very, very well with each other, which is something that I have, I said years and years ago in when I wrote that first article. Something that I didn't expect, I thought there would be more or uh, um, sword belt and battle belt. There are very, very few. I thought that those two would go hand in hand, um, but across all of the game, there are very few sword and battle belts. I thought those two would go hand in hand. Um, just something interesting there to think about. So let me scroll up here. Some other things that I made note of, these are more just for fun than anything else. Uh, we had already talked about flame and crown. 
um, being the most common two belt combination. Uh, overall, newer kingdoms tend to give more awards than older kingdoms, but not always. We talked about that. This one, just for fun. Uh, I had known for a long time that there are certain names in Amgard that are used uh, more than others, right? Raven is one. Shadow is one. Rowan is one, right? Every kingdom, for the most part, has multiple of them. This is a name that I saw pop up more and more and more and more that I wasn't aware was a super popular name. And so I've been playing for almost 15 years. So maybe this is something that was just popular way back when, but isn't anymore. This name, Kismet, kind of interesting here. And then the biggest thing that I want people to take away from this, please, please, please update your orcs. <laughs> Get your PMs to update your orcs. I know that this, this is missing knights because PMs enter masterhoods, but not knighthoods or that they're just not entered at all. Um, I did go through and I tried to eliminate the doubles. Like sometimes a uh, flame belt is entered twice. Um, I removed all of those that I could find. Um, but biggest thing, lesson I learned from this, <laughs> A, my kingdom gives out way more knighthoods than what many other kingdoms do. Then also almost every kingdom doesn't keep their orc records up to date. So this will be added to my crusade of everyone needs to update their wiki please also everyone update your orc go check right now make sure that your orc is up to date uh, i would love to know your takeaways from this as well take a look at this uh this data this spreadsheet let me know where your kingdom falls in the grand scheme of things and then more importantly what do you think about that right my kingdom over here with winner's edge uh, we give out more belts than the average kingdom. Uh, looking at it, our numbers, the average is 23% of all belts given our crown. We are right there at 22%. No big deal. Uh, our flame, 33% of our belts are flame, where the average is 35 with all kingdoms. Cool. No big deal. That one doesn't bother me. Over here, 27% of our belts are serpent where the average is 25. That's a little higher. That's the one that we're high on. Um, our battle and our sword are pretty average overall. The thing is, is that we have given the same amount of belts as other kingdoms who have been around for 20 years. And my kingdom's only been around since 2017. Um, so our percentages line up, but we give out more on average than what other kingdoms do. So let's go back and look here. We give out 1.6 crown per year. The average, that's double. We go over here, we look at flame. We give out double what the average kingdom does on flame. We give out over double the amount of serpent belts that the average kingdom does. We give out slightly more swords than the average kingdom, but not terribly much, and slightly more uh, battles than the average kingdom. But again, those are close enough that doesn't bother me. Essentially, it's these three. My kingdom gives out twice as many crown belts, flame belts, and serpent belts as the average kingdom does. Is that an inherently bad thing? I don't know. I don't want to flood belts, right? But if we have people who are good and deserving and worthy and we think will be great with new players, I don't really have an issue giving belts. I would like potentially to see a slowdown uh, in Winter's Edge and uh, Rising Winds, because those are the two that I play in the most. Rising Winds knighted like 13 people last reign or two reigns ago or something. For me, that's crazy. I think that is way too much because the biggest thing I think people don't think about is the strain that that puts on your artists who want to make gifts for all their friends, right? I make woven belts. Each belt takes me five hours. If I wanted to make a belt for every person knighting in Rising Winds last year, I would have made, had to make more belts for the whole year or then for my friends giving to nightings than I would have made for my whole um, stock going and selling for an entire event, right? I would have had to make, you know, 22 or 24 or whatever the total number of belts that were given out were. And so for those who are crafters who are trying to make things for their friends, it's just not feasible. It's not tenable long-term to be knighting 6, 8, 10, 12 people per reign for your artists that are trying to make stuff for their friends. I also think it does uh, tend to lose some of its value uh, when there are four knightings in one normal kingdom event. 
I don't mind one on Friday on Friday night for like a second or third belt. And then the main one during court is either your fifth belt or your first belt. That doesn't bother me. I think two at event, maybe three, if we're really pushing it, if it's like friends, right? If me and my buddy are getting 90 together, I have no issue with that. The hard part for me is, is when I go to these events and I I'll go and there's like five nightings going on in a two day event. The nights are excited to get knighted. So they're not going to complain about it. As someone who has been a knight for many years, I can tell you that sucks. Uh, looking back on it, many of those knights are not going to enjoy their looking back on it. They're going to say, I wish I would have waited. I wish we would have had fewer people. I wish there could have been more hoopla for that. Uh, it also diminishes the hoopla for new players, right? I remember vividly my first knighting that I ever went to and the awe that that inspired to then now it's like, oh, well, now there's six or eight of them per event. It's like... That just, it's, it's not as grand as it used to be. So it's a hard thing. And I'd love to hear your opinions about it. If we have people who are good at it, should we artificially slow down nightings? I don't think so. But then how do we make the nightings that we do have when we're having so many mean and be significant in the way that they always have been? Because we don't want to do a disservice to the person being knighted, their friends who are making them stuff, and then the new player who's trying to experience maybe for the first time the awe that comes with a knighting. So let me know down in the comments, thoughts on this as a whole. I would love to be able to hear them. I'll see you next time. I'm St. Godric. Peace.